Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Welcome to the Old Westbury Seventh-day Adventist Church. I see we made it in. It's nice and chilly outside. Uh, in Queens, it's like minus two degrees. You know, just the kind of weather the pastor hopes for, you know? So, yes, we know about the, his weather. In fact, pastor was doing a little research, so, because, you know, the pastor came from Hawaii, so I said, okay, let me see what the weather in January is for Hawaii. Yeah, 69, the highs, 79, yeah. Yeah, 79 in January, the coldest month in Hawaii. Go figure. Well, a couple of announcements here. Uh, this Monday, we'll have our service for Cynthia. The funeral will be from 12 to 12.30 at the Old Westbury Seventh-day Adventist Church. Those of you who are able to attend, I encourage you to please come. Uh, we also have an announcement here. Pathfinder Club 2022. Registration still open with a deadline on January 29th. So to obtain, obtain forms and fees, please contact club leader, Ms. Terry Jimenez. Those, those of you have that have children are interested in enrolling them. As we continue, please wear your mask indoor. Omicron is not going away no time soon. Even though I was just talking to the past of people predicting, but I'm not too trusting in that prediction. Uh, Today we have a special day, not one, not two, not three, but four baptismal pastor, four, quattro, okay, big day today, so in between, in between announcements, the pastor got to do his wardrobe change to keep this going. Uh, we have prayer meeting Wednesday at 7.30, or 7.30, yes, uh, to, today's offering, uh, offering and local ties, food pantry. Will be open the first Sunday from 2 to 4 and the third Thursday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And of course, for those of you online, I will rem I'll be remiss if I didn't welcome you. Please continue to view us online. Uh, email your prayer line, your prayer request. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube. And let's continue with Daniel 10 10, pray in the morning, 10 10 at night. That concludes our announcement for today. Please rise. Please stand. Excuse me. For many there. Please stand for as we call for worship, please. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, although it's cold outside here in Long Island this morning, the warmth of our uh, presence in, with the Holy Spirit gives us the joy to continue on. We are thankful for this day set apart for us to gather and to worship. We thank you for the promise that where we can come, you will be in the midst. And we pray for your presence. Pray for the angels. Pray for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit as we worship you today. Bless our service as we do it in your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please continue to stand.
please be seated. Impulsive giving. The progress of God's work depends upon the systematic giving of God's people. But is there room in your giving pattern to do something impulsive? The Bible tells of a story of a woman who was so captivated by God's love and mercy that she did something totally impulsive. I think you know the story. She spent the equivalent of one year's wages on perfume. She went to a party to which she was not invited, and she anointed Jesus with that expensive perfume. Then she cleansed Jesus' feet with her tears and wiped his feet with her hair. Some of those who witnessed this display were offended. She was a symbol, she was a woman of a dubious background, and letting her hair down in public was a symbol of immorality. But she was motivated by one thing, the desire to show Jesus just how much he meant to her. Systematic giving is a good thing, but it's easy to slip into a pattern of doing it out of habit rather than expression of God's love. So if you hear the Holy Spirit asking you to do something impulsive today, why not do it? Today's offering is for the local church budget. This is our opportunity to support our local church here in Old Westbury. You can place your offerings in the vestibule, in the offering plate, or you can give online at the church website. Please pray with me. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this Sabbath day. We thank you for this church where we could come together as a family of believers to worship with you. Help us now to be faithful in our tithes and generous in our offerings. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Sabbath once again. What a delight it is to be here for a baptism as we continue to begin a new year and to have Sister Rosa here with us today. She has been going through the Bible study lessons. She has committed herself to the Lord and said, yes, I want to be baptized. But she said, I have one thing you need to pray for, Pastor, and I, I don't like water and I don't like to swim. So what are we going to do? <laughs> So last Sabbath, we came together, we came up here, we got in the baptistry without water. We felt safe then, and I said, we'll just put a little bit more for the baptism, and with God's angels, it'll all go well. And praise the Lord, here we are today. So wonderful, so happy to have Rosa here and her decision to be baptized and follow Jesus. And so now, Rosa, because of your decision to give your life to the Lord, to follow Jesus' example and to be baptized, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, amen.
when a mother and daughter come together to make the decision for the Lord, it's truly a blessing. Amen. Amen. They have been through the studies together, and it's been a wonderful journey for both of them. And so I'm so excited to have Jaylene make the decision to follow the Lord and to have it done on this special day with her mother. So Jaylene, because of your decision to follow Jesus, to give your life to him, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. journey for Wendy and to be here today. You know, she has been one who has committed her life to the Lord and has chosen with support and at times without support to follow on. And to be a mother, to make a decision for her and her daughter, we should say praise the Lord. To be the example for her mother, we should say praise the Lord. What a joy it is to be able to have mothers like that. And we want to say a special prayer for Wendy that as she continues to grow and to follow the Lord, that God will be with her and bless her. And today we're her family, amen? Today we stand with her as brothers and sisters in her decision to be baptized. So now, Wendy, because of your decision to give your life to the Lord, to commit all to Him, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. been about six months ago maybe five months ago less less four months ago there was this nice lady sitting in the back of the church sabbath after sabbath was coming sometimes she'd bring her mother along and so i finally had the opportunity to say hello and greetings and everything and it was a couple of weeks later we were doing baptisms and rosanna came up to me she goes pastor i need to be baptized I'm like, praise the Lord. I love doing that. You know that. So I'm like, praise the Lord. And so we started Bible studies. We met together. Come to find out, Rosanna had already gone through almost all the Bible studies by herself. She's had a unique journey. And God has brought her to this day for this commitment. And so I want to say thank you. Thank you for your decision to follow the Lord, for your mother to be here today, and for all of our church family supporting you in this. And we will be praying for you, Rosanna. Ask that God will continue to bless, continue to be near to you, to fill your heart. And so now, because of your decision to follow Jesus in the example of baptism, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of His Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So good to see decisions made for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Continuing on. And listen, friends, if the Holy Spirit is impressing you that, yes, I need to study. Yes, I need to get my life right. 
Listen, no matter what's happening, make that decision. It's an experience that you don't want to miss, an opportunity to commit your life to the Lord. And already we began the new year with my brother Cody, who's still here with us today. Thank you. Cody can testify what an amazing journey. And these ladies now can also share. For those of you that have been baptized, you know the blessing that comes. But if there's someone here today that has not made that decision, someone who has felt like they have fallen away and need to reunite, please get in contact with me. Please pray and ask God to set up so that this day can be your day and that we can experience it together with you. So I want to invite you to pray with me as we lift these four ladies up in prayer and for each person that may be watching online that also needs to make this decision. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for decisions. Decisions to follow you in the example of baptism, to have you a part of our lives. So today, Father, I pray for these four ladies who have been baptized. Different circumstances, different journeys, but yet your spirit still working to bring them together today for this special occasion. Anoint them with your Holy Spirit as you have prayed. Bless them. And Father, I want to pray for that person here today in the church or watching online. Ask the Lord that you will touch their hearts if they need to be baptized. If they need to make this decision, don't put it off. Time is running. Time is now. Now is the day to stand up and say yes. So please be with those individuals. Thank you, Father, for all of us coming together and rejoicing and to say hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus for these decisions. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Let us turn in our Bibles to Revelation 14, verses 6 through 13. It's Revelation 14, verses 6 through 13. And um, this is the proclamation of the three angels. And it says, Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. And then another angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Then a third angel followed, saying with a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image. And whoever receives the mark of his name, here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. May the Lord add a special blessing to the reading of his word. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church family. It's a blessing to be here in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. 
It's a new year, 2022, and we are starting it off pretty good, I would say. Amen? Amen. We've had our 10 days of prayer, five baptisms, and it's not even the end of January. I hope that's a good sign for the rest of 2022, that the Lord is going to work mightily through the Old Westbury Seventh-day Adventist Church. Amen? Amen? This is our prayer time. This is where we seek the Lord in prayer, and we come to a God whose glory is his character, whose glory is so unapproachable that we dare not come into his presence without an intercessor. We bring our prayers, we bring our petitions individually and collectively as a church body. How many of you have a special request? Please indicate by raised hand. All of us, let's kneel as we are able. We'll sing our prayer song and then I'll lead out in prayer. glorious and eternal Father in heaven. We come, O Lord, on bended knee, with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, bowing before the King of the universe, coming to you in Jesus' name, praying for forgiveness of all of our sins. You know every thought, every deed, every word, and there is nothing hidden from your sight. So, Father, we confess our sins. We acknowledge that we fall short each and every day. We pray, Lord, for a cleansing. We pray for forgiveness. And we pray, Lord, that you'll help us to stand on our feet once more. And as we've come today, Lord, and as you saw the lifted hands, I pray, Lord, that you would look down upon each individual petition each person has a prayer, Lord, that they want answered. We know, Father, that you would withhold no good thing from any of us. So I pray, Lord, that you would grant according to your will. Help us to have faith and trust in you, that you know what is good for us. We thank you, Father, for the blessing thus far. We thank you that you have brought baptisms to this church. While many churches are shuttered and closed, Lord, you've brought baptisms to this church. We want to thank and praise you for that. We thank you for the work that is going, and we pray, Lord, for this year. We pray that this year would be a year filled with more baptisms, Father, that more souls will surrender to enter into the kingdom. We thank you that the Holy Spirit has touching people's lives to come here for Bible studies, Lord, and I pray that you would bless the work of our Bible workers, and also the pastor. Continue, Father, to bless us as a church body. Help us to love and encourage one another, to live out the gospel in our lives. And as we come here today to worship you, Father, I pray that all that is done here is acceptable and pleasing in your sight, that every song that is sung, that every prayer that is offered, that every instrument that is played is done to your honor and glory. Amen. Bless the pastor as he brings the message, the message of the three angels, Lord. Continue, Father, to bless the words that he speaks. Help us to all have our ears inclined to what the Spirit may say. And when all is said and done, 
May the name of Jesus be lifted up. May his name be glorified. We pray, Father, that we may be able to stand in these last days as we look forward to not only looking forward, but also hastening your coming. Bless us to this end, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Our song this morning, Take My Hand Medley, um, we'd like to dedicate to all the, everyone, but to the baptism candidates that just gave their lives to Jesus. May they take his hand and follow him all the days of their lives.
Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. I guess they didn't do it louder. You didn't hear me the first time. Happy Sabbath. Wow, it's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Good to have all of you here with us worshiping together. I want to say welcome to our guests and visitors that are here today for whatever reason has uh, brought you here. Welcome. Good to have you. For those watching online, thank you again for tuning in to the Old Westbury Seventh-day Adventist Church as we worship today, as we fellowship today. It's already been an amazing Sabbath. Four baptisms, hallelujah, four baptisms. Been a great year with five baptisms already rolling. And thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity to do that. And we want to welcome you here today as we continue our worship service. Today, our theme, our topic is three angels call to prayer. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we do praise you. We thank you for this opportunity to gather. We ask that your Holy Spirit be poured out. Bless us as we open your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Every year, the Seventh-day Adventist Church in January, which started back in 2015, has a special prayer emphasis called the 10 Days of Prayer. 10 Days of Prayer. If you miss joining us here at Old Westbury this year, you can go to our YouTube page and you'll find each evening uploaded there and you can be a part of that. Or on a larger scale, you can Google it and you'll see that the world church, everywhere around the world, people were gathering for 10 days of prayer. And the idea of 10 days, why 10 days? Did we just pick that out of the blue? Well, the idea was when Jesus told his disciples at his ascension to go back to Jerusalem and to the upper room and to pray. Well, that was day 40 from the resurrection of Jesus and 10 days later were Pentecost and so that's why the idea of 10 days of prayer came about that after the 10 days as the disciples were in the upper room and the others were gathered together there was a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit and wow what a work they did and so we want to experience the same thing because uh, we look into Scripture We look into the prophecies, you look into the things that are happening around the world, people are wondering what's next, what's going to take place. And we as Seventh-day Adventists believe that we have a special calling found in Revelation chapter 14, and we call it the three angels' message, the three angels' message. For a long time, the logo of our church had three angels going. Now on our logo, we have uh, three different lines there representing the three angels, but the message is the same, and it's for us to prepare for Christ's soon coming. Now, an important thing to know when you study Revelation is that it's not in chronological events. In other words, each thing is not laid out. What John is doing while he is in vision, he's he's seeing these events and he puts it together in one. And then he sees another group of events and he puts it together in the next. And so on and so on throughout Scripture, or rather throughout the book of Revelation. And when you come to Revelation chapter 14, verse 6, of which we're looking at today, you see that he's doing a cycle of letting us know the things that are going to take place right Right before Jesus comes the second time. Now, how do we know it's before he comes the second time? Well, because once you get done with the three angels' message, you look at verse 13 and 14 and 15 and so on, and right there you have what the Bible calls the great harvest or the great coming and reaping of God's people, the second coming. Throughout Scripture, when we talk about the harvest, we're talking about the second coming. So we know that these three angels' message happens right before Christ comes the second time, which I would like to suggest to you is right now. You have your Bibles? Turn with me. Isaiah 42. In my Bible reading this week, uh, I I had a text pop up, and I want to include it here with us. Isaiah is a prophet of the Old Testament, very powerful prophet, a man of God who had messages for his people. Beautiful book, one of the greatest books in the Bible. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 9. Notice what he is saying in connection with what we're going to be looking at today. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 9. Look what it says here. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Okay, Isaiah, what else? Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Friends, that's what the purpose of prophecy is for. So that when these things happen, you can believe. Because when God says, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, when I tell you what's going to take place before it happens, then you can know God is God. 
One of the greatest chapters in the Bible, Daniel chapter 2, is where God lays out for over nearly 4,000 years of what's going to take place on earth's history. If you can do that, oh, that's a God to serve. And here in the three angels' message, God has given us this, this insight, this warning, this encouragement, this call to wake up, a clarion call to wake up and saying, look, I'm telling you what's going to happen before it happens, so as it's happening, you can believe. Wow, thank you, Isaiah. I like that. Before they spring forth, I have told you of them. Know this. We talked about it last two weeks ago. God is still on the throne. Nothing's catching him by surprise. Nothing is catching him by surprise. He knew this was going to take place. He saw the scenes unfold. Therefore, I want to be with one who knows what's coming next. Amen? People are stressed. Am I going to lose my job? Am I going to have COVID? How long is COVID going to go? What's happening next? Well, God says, I've got it. As a matter of fact, I've told you disease and pestilence and problems are going to happen. I told you there would be conflict. I told you there would be problems. Set still and know I am God, and I'll take care of it. As a matter of fact, let me remind you of Isaiah 42. I told you before it happened, it was going to happen. So now, John, the revelator, the one who has given us a revelation, a revealing of Jesus Christ. That's an important insight right there. People say the book of Revelation is closed. No way, friends, it's not closed. Right at the very beginning, he says, a revelation of Jesus Christ that I'm supposed to give to the people who are living even today. So what is it? One author put this. The theme of greatest importance is the third angel's message, embracing the message of the first and second. All should understand the truths contained in these messages and demonstrate them in daily life. For this is essential to salvation. I want to be saved, don't you? We had four baptisms of people that are saying, I want to be saved. Friends, allow God to work in your life. Allow God to prepare you for what's coming. And I like how the theme this year for our 10 days of prayer was the three angels' message with prayer. Because when you look at the three angels' messages, some may even get nervous. Some may be startled. Some may be scared. Because when you come to the third angel's message, which we're going to go through today, when you come to the third angel's, friends, it is the most solemn warning found in the Bible. It is the most intense wake-up call that you will find in the Bible. But you see, if you're praying with Jesus, what do you have to fear? When you have Jesus with you, what do you have to be worried about? What is it that can come into your life that God cannot help you through if you have God on your side? That's why he gives this three angels message. Turn with me in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 14, looking at verse 6. In my Bible, it has the title, The Proclamation of the Three Angels. Let us go through these this morning. Now, understand this. We're going to hit some key points of the three angels so that you can have a good basic working knowledge of the three angels. But these three messages, they are seminars that are done on them. As a matter of fact, David, you and I did it. It was about six months ago, wasn't it? It was this summer. I can't remember the exact day. But we did a, we did a three-part series on these angels. You can go to our YouTube page and look that up and spend a little more time with each one of them. But today, I want to bring them all together as a reminder. As a matter of fact, let me share this thought with you. With you as we look at this as you look at these three angels there's one two three and each one of them connects with the other and i want you to see the three angels in this in this way see the three angels as god in the first angel saying wake up i want to save you i want to protect you i want to help you the second angel comes in and it says here's a system that is going to bring about problems and so jesus is saying in the first angel wake up get out of it Get out of the problems there. Let me help you. Let me save you. And then the third angel comes and he says, look, I need you to be aware of this. I need you to be aware that if you don't listen, this is what's going to happen. Now, it's up to you. You can choose. My choice, Jesus says, his choice is for us to come out. Jesus says for us to get connected with him. That's Jesus' choice. Friends, please understand that. There's too many people out there that think that God's choice is to make your life miserable. So many people out there are like, well, if God is good, why is he punishing people? God's not punishing people. We're suffering under the results of sin. That's what's happening. And Jesus is saying, sin is bad. Can you say that with me? Sin is bad. Stay away from it. Stay close to Jesus. And the third angel, which is this wow warning, is letting us know that if you choose to stay in there, 
this is what's going to happen to you. God's choice, come out. God's choice, let me save you. God's choice, let me heal you. God's choice, let me forgive you. God's choice, let me deliver you. Let me bring you out. Because if you don't and you stay there, you can't come back later and say, nobody told me. (laughs) Have you ever done that? I've done that. I have a tendency to drive fast. Some of you know that. And I've used that. I've said that. Officer, I did not know that I'm supposed to be driving 35 here. It seems, based on the way the road is constructed, 75 is a healthier way to go. So the officer smiles. Oh, 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 foolish man. Let me give you a ticket to let you know what the speed limit on this road is. And I cannot go to the judge and say, Judge, I did not know. He says, well, now you know. I do not know. He said, was there a sign there? The police officer said, yes, there was actually 30 of them. He was driving so fast he couldn't see them. So whose fault is it that I got a ticket? The police officers? The signs? The judge? It's probably your fault, wasn't it? You're the ones. You're the blame. Don't we do that today? It's not my fault. It's your fault. Even when I'm speeding, it's your fault, officer. If you hadn't been there, there will be none of that in this day. Dare I say there'll be none of that in the days that are coming. Why? Because Jesus, even through Isaiah, said, I'm letting you know what's coming. So when it springs up and it's taking place, you won't be walking around like, wow, what is this? You can't go to God and say, God, you should have told me. Because notice verse 6. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. Verse 7, saying with a loud voice, right there in the first angel, it's telling us it is going everywhere. It is being told to everybody. And it's not just being done as a whisper. Psst. Did you hear about the three angels? No, no. It says with a loud voice. Look that Greek word up. It's like a megaphone. It is crying out. It is shouting out. That's one of the things that I stand very proud of about being a Seventh-day Adventist. This church has a global mission. This church has a global destiny. This church has a desire to take the gospel everywhere, all around the world. And if you're in a church that is not centered about taking the gospel of Jesus Christ to everybody, you should question whether you should be a part of that church or not. Because the Bible says in the last days, God's people will be going out globally. We are doing that. Pray for the ministries. We just embarked upon a wonderful program called the 10 Days of Prayer where we were praying with brothers and sisters all around the world, every continent, every continent. So we can't come up and say, Lord, I didn't know it. There won't be the excuse, I didn't hear about it. Because, what does it say here? Then I saw another angel. Now, these things are symbolic here. It's not a literal angel that you're going to be looking up in the sky, and like the airplanes that fly over us here on Long Island, you'll be up one day, and there's an angel with wings. It's symbolic. It's talking about a messenger. Messengers. It's going to be short wave. It's going to be social media. It's going to be people. It's going to be us taking the gospel. And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth. To what? Every nation, tribe, tongue, people. The gospel does not discriminate. The gospel is not here to pick certain people. I praise the Lord when I look at our church here today. This is a church that is multi-ethnic. Can I do something? Would it be all right? If you are first generation or second generation from another country other than America, can you raise your hand? Wow, look at that. First generation, second generation, that you're from another country other than that. Now, I'm from America, so I'll represent USA. Woo! Okay, I'm here. America, wonderful. Did you see that? This message is for all of us, for everywhere. It's not just for certain people. It's not just for these people. It's not just for men. Not just for women. It's for everybody. And what is it? It says it, and we've read it already, having this message, having this everlasting gospel to preach to those who are on the earth. Everlasting, the glorious gospel. You see, friends, what do you need to deal with today's problems? You need the gospel. 
How do you deal with financial problems? How do you deal with success? You see, when we come to America, we still, we have people just, just dying, killing to get into this country. How do you deal with success? I've been in countries where I've been in villages that have grass huts where there's mud floors and a pot in the corner of where they make the rice each evening and that's their meal and then they make the rice in the morning and they take it with them to go work in the field all day and they come home. I've been to places like that. And then I've been here and boy, North Shore, multi-million dollar homes. How do you deal with success? Some people are going to lose their soul because of success more than those who have nothing struggle with their lives because they know they need something. Success, the danger is we don't need anything. And we live in America today and we have people that are out there that's like, the gospel of me. I will save myself. I will deal with my problems. If I could just get to America, I will have success. And then once I am successful, once I have a car, once I have a home, once I have money, once I have an iPhone, once I have a big screen TV, once I have fancy clothes, once I have medical care, once I have everything, Jesus, thank you, I won't need you again. That's what we're living in today. That's what we have here in America. Have people that, <laughs> we're in the midst of COVID, and there's stadiums with 60,000 people, freezing cold, and I'm worried about no COVID. But on Sabbath morning, come to church, now look, if you're immune compromised and you have issues, take care of your health. But make sure you are taking care of your health. You see, another reason of success in America is we got so much junk food we stuff in ourselves. Our bodies are so corrupt and sick and everything. We don't need COVID to make us sick. You just need a cold air. We have to come here for the everlasting gospel to help us with success. We need a gospel that helps us with success when we have everything, when we got all the money. And then what do we do? We don't need Jesus. Jesus says, you need me. Because let me tell you what, what happens when it's all wiped up? What happens when it's all taken away? My wife and I were talking the other day. We have a, a money we're saving up to try to buy a house. You pray for us. Man, the homes here in New York, boy, they are costly. No, cheap little cottages. And I thought in Hawaii, Caesar, they were expensive. We had this nice little 1,200 square foot little thing, 650 to $700,000. Wow. And it was single wall, because in Hawaii they don't have big things. It's a single wall. It's these little plantation houses that they, wow, the, the grass will grow up inside. <laughs> to pull the grass out on the inside. Wait a minute, what's that? Single paneled wall. $650,000. But as long as I'm in paradise, I have success. It's all good. So my wife and I are talking about, we're trying to get a little money together, buy a place. She's worried. She says, what happens if for some reason, just this last week we had this actually take place, Canada is now taxing people who don't have the vaccine. What happens is because of the vaccine or some other issue, we're going to get to it, happens where all of a sudden your money in your bank account is gone. How much money do you have stuck in your mattress? What happens when your credit card is denied? What happens when your cell phone, and I'm in trouble because my cell phone, I can't wait. You know they're going to put your driver's license on your cell phone. They already have it in Arizona and other states so you can have your passport and your, your driver's license on your cell phone. You know how amazing that's going to be? Except for when they turn it off and you can't use it. Everlasting gospel is why we need to be praying for one another now. And for those of you that think it will never happen, wake up. Wake up. It's right now. Supreme Court had to get in to deal with an issue with our president. It's still not resolved. And it's just letting us know what's coming. It's not going to get better. It's not going to get better. But the everlasting gospel of the first angel that's going out for everybody is saying, come back to God. When it says there in verse 7, fear God, it's saying, be obedient to God. Come back to God. Reverence God. Allow God to be the one who rules your life. He's the one who's going to help you. He's the one that's going to be able to give you peace when there's problems all around. Now, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to let you know what's coming. Just like the Bible's saying, we're not scaring you, but here's what's coming. Dare I say, we're living in it right now. 
But the everlasting gospel, the first angel, is going out there and he's saying, stay away from the second angel. What's the second angel? And another angel, verse 8, followed saying, Babylon, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she, check this out, has made how many nations? How many nations? Does it say there's made just the USA, just North America, just Canada, just Europe, a brother from England, just England. No, no, no. All nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Now, it's interesting. Again, we're talking about symbolism. We're not talking about a literal fornication. We're talking about a union with church and state that should not happen. In the Bible, God says church and state should be separated. The state should not come in and tell the church what to do. The state should not come in and mandate, regulate, enforce, restrain, whatever word you want to use, the church. And here, we're told that this Babylon is going to make all nations drink of the wine of her wrath. Now, when the Bible talks about wine, it's talking about you have pure wine, you have impure wine. You have fermented wine, you have pure grape juice. And it's talking about doctrines, ideas, theologies. You have pure ones and you have impure ones. And there's a system here called Babylon. And what are we talking about Babylon? If you study your Bibles, you know in the Old Testament there was a, a Babylon, a great nation, a great nation. And the word in the Babylonian language, Babylon, means the gate of the gods. So when you came to Babylon, you were coming to the gate of the gods of that time. Now, the Hebrews used it in a derogatory time to say confusion, a negative statement, that if you're in Babylon, it was bad. As a matter of fact, at the time of John's writing, the reason why he used the word Babylon and not Rome is because Rome was screening the letters he was writing, and these letters would have never gotten off the Isle of Patmos had he used the word Rome, but the Jews and the people at this time, going back all the way to the Hebrews, used the word Babylon in a negative sense, talking about a false worship, a false power, a false empire. So Rome, at the time that was persecuting, was considered to be Babylon. So here John says, look, here's a false system of worship. Let's get out of it. Now many of us as Seventh-day Adventists are quick to look at, oh yes, you know, we, we got to get out of the, the Sunday worship, Sabbath worship, we got to get that. But friends, there's more than that. If you want something interesting, go this afternoon and study the isms. I want to share with you the isms of Babylon, racism, terrorism, capitalism, nationalism, realism, feminism, activism, Catholicism, individualism, alcoholism, socialism, consumerism. You see, we're so caught up today thinking that it's just some bad church over there and understand that error is error. If someone's telling you all you need is a better job and more money, you have been lied to and you're in trouble. If someone's told you all you need to do is move to America, woo, yeah, okay, come here. But if you leave Jesus there, you're lost here just like you're lost there. Moving here and having a big screen TV does not mean you're now, I've made it. Hollywoodism. People out there saying, I don't agree with all the things that are going on, but do you watch television? Ooh, you pray for me. Devil goes after me with that. I like TV. I like a big screen TV. I like the remote control, 50 million channels. Everything you could ever want to see. To tell a vision. To tell an error. Wow. So Jesus is saying, come out of that. Verse 8, come out of that. Why? Because, friends, if you stay there, if you stay there, verse 9, and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark on his forehead or in his hands, hold on to that, where? Forehead or where? Hands. He himself shall also drink, 
Now check this out because right here in this verse, you're hearing words John writes that is the most unlike God thing you find in Scripture. Are you ready? And he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. Some translation says poured out without mixture, poured out without any reserve. You see, each day, friends, the good, the bad, the ugly, the evil, the righteous, all of us right now are having God's mercy and grace. If it wasn't, <laughs> the wicked, when they do wickedly, would die. But at this time that's coming, his wrath is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. Now, in the Bible, there's two cups. There's a good cup, there's a bad cup. There's the cup of sorrow, the cup of punishment, the cup. Jesus drank that cup when he was in the, the garden. You remember it says, Father, if possible, what? Take this well, then we have the communion cup. We talk about the communion cup, the righteousness. But when you talk about the cup of indignation, you talk about the cup of this, this outpouring of God's wrath not mixed with mercy. Why? Because you see, friends, for 6,000 years, Jesus has been dealing with Lucifer, who is now considered Satan, that has been plaguing this planet that we live on. And soon he's going to judge him, the fallen angels, in every person who chooses to stay with him. That's why God is saying, I have a gospel, a good news, a way for you to get out. So come out of it. Get out of there. Because if you don't, my wrath is going to be poured out. Can you imagine the day in which Jesus pours out his wrath upon this planet and every person that's alive and have to stand there and watch what people who are being broken and destroyed by the plagues, and that's what it's talking about, the plagues that are coming. He's saying, I don't want you to do that. Have you ever had to spank your child? Now, I know there's parents out there that have a, a different way of, of raising their children. Have you ever spanked your child? How many times has it brought you great joy to just spank your child? Now, there may be days when you think, eh, no, no, no. When's the last time you've disciplined your child and you had a smile on your face and you're like, ha, 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 I've been telling you, I've been waiting for this day, and here it is, and now I'm going to spank the bad out of you. It just doesn't happen. The parents' hearts broken as they discipline the child because they have to learn in the hope of redeeming them, of hope of correcting them, and the hope of having them to be restored back, to learn, to change the bad behavior. At this time, there's none of that. This time, it's over. It's done. Friends, why did we say the three angels' prayer? Because, friends, now's the time to pray. Now's the time to say, Lord, look into my heart and waken me up. Help me, because I don't want this. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstones in the presence of the holy angels. That's when justice will be served. You see, we don't get justice in the courts today. Many of us want revenge. This is when revenge happens. We want vengeance. This is when vengeance happens. God is a God of mercy and love and compassion, and he's going to deal with this thing that we are struggling with. And friends, if you don't choose now to change the way your prayer life is, change the way your life is living, and get in harmony with the call of the everlasting gospel, when this happens, you're going to be on the outside looking in. And then there's no one to blame but you because you chose it you chose not to go and get the grace you chose not to hear the everlasting gospel you chose not to make the changes in your life you chose to stay in the isms instead of coming out friends why why i don't i don't want to be there so when the angel says come out of babylon i got out of babylon i'm still running you pray for me i'm praying for you i don't want god's wrath poured out on me without mixture and to receive the torment that's here, this angel is intense, is it not? Can you show me another place where you have, where God is saying this, where one of the Bible writers is saying this to let us know, but he's doing it because he loves us. And let me tell you what, friends, whether you want to believe it or not, you with me? Whether you accept it or not, will not change the reality that this angel is coming. 
You with me? It's coming. It's coming. But if you have the gospel, I say let it come. If you have the gospel, you'll say let it come. The Bible has story after story after story of men, women, and children that are connected with God, and they said let it come. Joseph. He said, no, I'm going to be faithful to God. Even though Potiphar's wife was saying all of these things. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Just kneel down, guys. Just kneel down. Just yield. Nope, we're standing up. We're going to burn you up. (laughs) You think so? Pray the way we want to pray. Daniel said, I don't think so. We're going to throw you in lions. Yeah, my God owns lions. You're going to have to do better than that. Peter, we're going to nail you to the cross. Mm, yeah, let's, hang, let's do it upside down. Paul, we're going to cut off your head because he was a Roman citizen. They couldn't do the other things. They wouldn't nail him to his cross, so we're going to cut off your head. My God can put another one right back on. <laughs> that don't scare me. The author of this book, you've heard me say, convert or we're going to put you in a tub of oil. Oh, now that will be fun. Let's try it out. Can you imagine oil? Have you ever seen oil? They put him in and pulled him out. and said, hey, fellas, what's next? (laughs) Nero was distressed, distraught, and couldn't sleep because he would take the Christians and cover them in tar and light them on fire, and they were singing hymns to Jesus. But are you, ready to, are you ready to stand? Are you ready to stand? We have four ladies today that says, yep. Have you had that experience? Friends, it's 2022. Let's, let's make the changes. Let's let the three angels come in and not scare us, but help us to open our eyes spiritually and see that God is calling us, that God is entreating us. He's pleading with us. Come on, let's go. Three angels, let's have it. First angel, everlasting gospel. I want it. Judgment hour, it's here. Got it. Babylon is fallen. It's fallen. Let's get out of it. I'm coming out. Jesus is saying, because if not, here's what's going to befall you. Here's going to... Do you want your neighbors to go through the third angel? And we're going to close with this thought. Do you really want your neighbors to burn... Do you really want your family who's not in the church to burn? Do you really want the people over there to burn? Then it's time for us to share the message with others. It's time for us to share with others. How, Pastor? Well, we've got Bible study cards. Pass them out. How, Pastor? (laughs) Social media. Come on. We have two kids, Lucas and Nina. They get on on a regular basis, Instagram. You can do that. Do you know that 2021 ended again the year where people were looking on podcasts and searches the most for what? The Bible. Why? Because they know something's wrong. They know something's wrong. And friends, we have the solution to what's wrong. The three angels' message is to let us know what's coming. Do you want your friends to burn? I don't. I want them to know about Jesus. Do you not have a good life with Jesus? If you're struggling, ask God to heal. And as he heals, you'll be able to share with others. Man, I once was lost. Now I'm found. I once was blind. Now I'm saved. I once had guilt eating me up. But now I have forgiveness setting me free. I once was chasing after the dollar, after the addictions, after the materialism, whatever ism you want to put in there. But Jesus came, and he changed my life. And now I have grace, I have peace, and I'm ready to share. So, friends, we are called. You see, these three angels' messages are really us. We're the angels. We're the ones to take the gospel. And this year, for the 10 days of prayer, we were praying for one another to have health, 
to have strength and to have the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So like the disciples long ago at the end of their 10 days, they were empowered to go out. So my prayer today is that you will be empowered. Now we got the message. Now we have it. It's in our hearts. We've heard it. It's in our ears. It's there. Now, Lord Jesus, help me stand up. You say, well, I'm not a preacher. You don't have to be a preacher. Be a prayer. Be a pray warrior. Prayer warrior. Get that right. Well, I can't preach. Pass out literature. Send an email. Share a link on your YouTube page or channel, whatever they call it. There's 50 million of these things out there. Pass them out. People are watching. Did you know that? You know why? Because they don't know what you know. They don't have what we have. It's time for us to share it. So I'm going to ask you something. We're going to close with a prayer of commitment. Don't want you to just stand because everyone's standing. No one's going to judge you if you don't. You're not ready for it? Sit down. But if you're ready to say, Lord, in 2022, by your grace, I'm going to give a Bible study. I'm going to pass out a piece of literature. I'm going to invite somebody to church. I'm going to invite somebody to watch an online study. I'm going to do something to reach out to somebody I want to ask you to stand so I can have a special prayer with you this morning. Now, don't just jump up because you're thinking I need to jump up. I'm saying I want you to be serious, and nobody's going to judge you. If you're not ready, sit down. It's okay. There's no judgment here. But if you're ready to say, Lord, please, I'm going to have the preacher today pray for me to have a special prayer to somehow, some way, reach out to somebody this year because you understand God is working. You should hear the testimonies of these ladies. None of us here reached out to them, but God reached out to them. Hallelujah. Their journeys were going here and there, and we have people today. My brother John, one Wednesday, sitting in church, he said, what time's the mass? I said, oh, brother. (laughs) Well, we ain't got mass in this church. (laughs) But we got prayer, amen? Did Bible studies, and here he is today. But... (laughs) God wants us to be involved. There is no greater joy in our experience than to be able to share the gospel with others. And if you're not ready, that's okay. That's all right. But if you're ready and you're standing, let's pray. Those watching online, I want you in your home, stand up. You think we don't see you, but God and the angels do. If you're not ready, that's all right. Just stay there. Stay put. That's okay. But if you're ready, I want to invite you, stand up. And if you're watching online, you post in there. Give me one of those emojis of you standing up, thumbs up. Give me an emoji that I'm standing for Jesus to do something. Lord, use me some way, somehow. I don't know. It's a little frightening, to be honest. It's a little scary, to be honest. Because now you've got to step out of the comfort zone of your daily life and into somebody else's life and somebody else's past, someone else's journey, and share the opportunity of Jesus with them. It's a little scary, but Jesus said, don't worry. Just like Peter, when he got out of the boat, I was with him. Like Daniel in the lion's sins, I was with him. Just like this simple cowboy from Kansas is now here preaching in New York City. Who would have guessed it? Father in heaven... The three angels' message is real. We want, to be, we want to be a part of it. But we need your divine grace and your help. Some of us are, are standing today to say, Lord, put somebody in my path. Impress me how I can, in a healthy way, share Jesus with others. Some of us are standing online and saying, Lord, okay, um, all right, I'm going to try this. If you need literature, we'll get literature for you. You need something to share, share the church's website. Invite them to an amazing fax. It is written, Breath of Life Bible Study. You can go to our website, and on our website, we have links for 10 different types of Bible studies that you can send to your friends and family to invite them. Say, would you just read it? I'm not going to hammer you. I'm not going to criticize you. I'm just asking you to read it. So friends, as we're standing today, we're asking for a special outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon us today. Help us. Guide us. Give us wisdom. Give us courage. It was frightening for the disciples who had just saw Jesus nailed to a cross, and now he's telling them to go share the gospel. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, it can be done. 
It's not by might nor by power, but by thy spirit, saith the Lord. And so we do that. So, Lord, I pray that you will be with all of us. Every person here today, whether we're standing or not, it's okay. I just pray that you'll be with us and anoint us. Help us to go into 2022 to be an angel shining the light of these three messages with those we come in contact with. I ask in your precious and holy name. Amen. I'd like to invite everybody to stand now as we have our closing hymn. Please, everybody stand and let's join together as we sing our closing hymn, For You I Am Praying. Please be seated. Before we have our elder come and do our closing prayer, we need to present our certificates and an official vote. So ladies, if you would please come up. We have a special gift for you, and uh, we'll have each of you come up. I know you'll enjoy being up in front of everybody. We want to do a, a special vote. Come on up here, sweetie. Very good. Have all four ladies come up here. Thank you so much. Oh, i got to put my mask on. 
All right, good to have all of you here. So church family, based on their baptism today, is there a motion we accept them into our church membership here at Old Westbury? Have a motion, a second. All in, all in favor, show by raise of hands and a big hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. So we want to give them a special gift on this day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sharon. And here is your certificate, your devotional, everything. So if you'll just turn them like this for just a minute, sweetie, thank you. And then uh, the camera will get a picture for you. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Have a great Sabbath. At this time, we'll have our elder come and dismiss us with prayer. God bless. Amen and amen. 2022 is off to a good start so far, at least as in terms of baptisms and the preaching of the word. Hopefully God can continue to use us. We have to pray for it, just as the pastor said, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. We have to pray for the Holy Spirit each and every day. Be persistent, be insistent, and God will hear and answer our prayers. Amen? Amen? Let's bow our heads for the benediction. Our loving Father, we thank you for the message. We thank you for the day that was today, Lord, that this Sabbath day was a blessing truly for all of us. As we saw the souls committed to you, Lord, that went into the watery grave and rose fresh and new, we pray, Lord, that we may recommit ourselves and our lives to you. We dedicate ourselves to you, Father, and we pray that you will humbly use us. Help us to preach the gospel, to be a word of encouragement to each and every person we encounter. Help us, Father, to be used by your spirit. Help us to empty ourselves of the world and more to have more of you enter within us. Give us your Holy Spirit. And now as we dismiss from this place, Father, I pray that you go before us. I pray that your spirit will continue to abide with us. I pray, Father, for traveling mercies for each and every person. Continue, Lord, to guard us and protect us throughout this week. Bring us back together that we may come and worship you once more. And bless our family, our friends, and our co-workers. And continue, Lord, to guide us by your spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The deacons and the ushers will dismiss us. Again, as we are under COVID protocols, please be mindful to keep your social distancing and to fellowship outside if you can. Thank you. God bless.